Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, got my book. Got my glass of wine. And I got some peeps. Um, so I don't really know. This is our first little Insta Live to talk about the book. I'm not quite sure how to do this. But um, I hope you all enjoyed it and keep telling me what you thought. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I think one of the best things about um, reading this book is the difference in where it brought you. Like, first of all, you were so in involved in Toby's story and you got so engrossed in it and you were like, who is Rachel and how could she be so horrible? And who could do this kind of thing. And it's just that um, Taffy just brings you on so many twists and turns. And in the end, when you finally hear Rachel's story and everything that she'd been through, the amount of empathy and sympathy you have. I mean, that's just a very general overview. <laughs> um, but okay, I'm gonna start talking to you people. Um, Okay, how did I feel about Rachel and the kind of person she was? Well, this is the thing. I think, so there's one line in the book that I I wrote it down because it sort of described to me, it's a line that Libby says, and it felt like to me the, the key to me understanding the book. And I don't know if this is what um, Taffy was trying to say or whatever, but... Um, so it is like a section where Libby's talking and she's like, the only way to get someone to listen to a woman is to tell her story through a man. Trojan horse your way into a man and people will give a shit about you. And I thought it was really interesting to start this story about essentially a woman who has a nervous breakdown, but through the guise of a single father and somebody who's been left abruptly and I think about how often that happens in life where it's the other way around and how would we feel if this was just a story about a single mother who'd been left by a man and left to look after the kids and would that be as unnerving and would we be as shocked by it um, and that's kind of to me I think maybe an interesting tool that she used that that you all of a sudden have to recalibrate your thinking about things. I don't know, it's, I'm just waffling now. Um, who is somebody else is saying? Somebody ask a question. What made me choose the book? Um, a recommendation from my friend Dominica. She actually gave it to me when I was in Los Angeles in January she gave me a couple of books that she had read and she had really enjoyed it and she always has great taste in books so I picked that one um I was all set to hate Rachel ah stop stop how do I go back oh, I was all set to hate Rachel from the perspective of others and then that final viewpoint of her blew me away cool ending wondering the next step what did I think about Seth I actually liked him I think he knows himself, unlike the other characters. Um, I think I've met a lot of Seths in my life. Um, and I think every single person in this book is is emotionally compromised or has baggage. And, and it's like everyone does, you know, and we all try and deal with whatever trauma and baggage we've been given from our childhoods and and you try and and deal with it the best you can i mean his absolute fear of commitment um you know at least he's not lying to anybody at least he's sort of you know by not getting involved with people up until i mean obviously he gets engaged towards the end but you know, but there's a loneliness there and you feel sad for him because you kind of think, oh, well, you're emotionally stunted, but, or is he? Because everybody is. Um, I felt Toby was a whiner right from the beginning. <laughs> Hi, Beverly Lees. Um, well, yeah, but I also, I, you know, there's so many things. It's, it's that funny thing of your, your empathy and your sympathies kind of go through all of these journeys. Like, first of all, you think, oh, what an honorable guy, you know, and he, he really just cares about his patients and he doesn't care about money and all of those things. But then you realize how actually he really did like all of the stuff that Rachel provided. And he really did um, 
want that lifestyle. I mean, if he didn't, they could have had a different life, but he was prepared to let her sort of do all the hard work for it, but yet wasn't noticing the emotional toll that that was taking on her or the in the physical toll it was taking on her. Um, do, do, do. Did I like the book? Yes, I did like the book. <laughs> did you like Rachel more once you saw the other side of her? Well, I think it's all about understanding what people go through. And I, and I think this is a really interesting thing. I think as women, um, sometimes we can judge other women's journeys and other women's actions a lot more harshly than we would if it was a man. And that's what I liked about this sort of Trojan horse idea that it, it sort of slips this um this kind of you know it makes you think one thing and then you realize oh well there's this whole other reasoning and, and narrative for it and and I think that if we'd just been told Rachel's story outright would we have had the same sympathy or would we have had the same understanding um exactly somebody you know Al I Ikerian I sorry it's so bad what I find interesting is we give a pass to Toby as we don't for Rachel completely. Like I completely think that, you know, we we hear so much about or we learn so much about why he feels the way he does. But in a weird way, like he's a very limited and stunted person. I mean, you even hear from Libby saying like, do you ever ask me any questions or do you even care what I think or what I say? And And you get to realize that he's someone who's very caught up in his own and uh, his own narrative and his own experiences. And so how how emotionally w there was he for Rachel? I mean, someone who had all of this trauma from childhood and then all of the trauma from her childbirth and that kind of PTSD that comes with that. And it was completely discounted and nobody really understood how deeply affected she was by all of that. And so then she threw herself into her work and she threw herself into providing for her kids in a way that she never had those things as a child. So that was her way of expressing love that she didn't get, but he didn't seem to understand any of that. Anyway, um, right, let's go for another. How do I feel about Toby's friends? Who Libby, loved Libby, Seth is hilarious. Um, why she chose to use Libby as a narrator. Any insights on that? No, I mean, I did I did do a little bit of reading on Taffy and I guess Taffy um, is a journalist, uh, also is a novelist, but um, does a lot of the similar work that she gave Libby, lives in New Jersey. So I wonder if it was a, I don't know, I wonder if in a way that that's, a character that sort of speaks for her and speaks for her own experiences and is a way in for her to sort of give some particular insights. I don't know. We'd have to ask Taffy. <laughs> um, yeah, there's somebody's like, it's a timeless theme. We even saw Claire do it on Outlander. She had to hide behind the side the pseudonym of a doctor to get them to listen to her medical advice. It is. I mean, it's it's funny when you hear Libby talk about it as well, about her experiences and even Rachel with her experiences um, as a woman in business and how different it is being a woman and the attitude that you get or the acceptance you get other than being a man in those experiences. I mean, I think we all experience that, but yet, you know, does... You know, there, there was another another quote, um, another Libby quote, which I loved. Uh, All humans are essentially the same, but only some of us, the men, were truly allowed to be that without apology. And I think about that <laughs> line a lot um, because I do think, you know, I watched and I don't know if anybody is a fan of hers or not. And I think I was always sort of, you know, uh, off to the side like never a huge fan always wondered like obviously I'm not American but you know a casual observer of hers but never like such a huge fan but I watched the Hillary documentary uh series recently and also it was really interesting just the double standard and the double 
I don't know, just the, the, the work you have to do. You have to be twice as good. You have to be twice as nice. You have to be twice as attractive. You have to be twice as controlled, but you can't be too controlled because you also have to be really personable. And it's just, it's just very interesting to read those passages about, um, about Libby's experience working at a male magazine or a, a men's magazine and uh, also um, Rachel's experience being, you know, an agent and starting her own agency or why she was um, overlooked for that promotion. So, um, okay, let's go for some more questions. Uh, do, do, do. <laughs> Hi, Marina. I did think about uh, younger people um, reading this and uh, the description of marriage and then also what happens in your middle age. It's really quite depressing. <laughs> um, and as someone who recently got married, it's kind of like, oh, God, uh, <laughs> she doesn't always paint the most... Um, uh, yeah, the most uplifting um, perspective on marriage or, or what happens in a marriage. But I have to say, I think the testament to it, though, is what happens at the end, where um, I think if, if people can learn from their failings and also realize that it's a constant negotiation and that you have to keep checking in and making sure that each other's goals and um opinions on how you live your life they're never those things aren't static right they change all the time and people evolve all the time and you have to constantly make sure that you each are evolving with it i guess um jesse G l james i hope today's dating life is not actually actually accurately represented in the book well i don't know but yeah i think it is it's pretty grim out there <laughs> um what else who else did you get confused at all with the different povs i sometimes find myself losing whose story it was at the time i think in the beginning i was a little confused but in the end, I do think that they had quite distinctive voices. So, and I actually loved when I was reading some of Libby's narration, I think her voice was particularly um, very clear. And then also with Rachel's, it was quite different, I think, to Toby's. Um, favorite thing and the worst thing about Toby? Um, I mean, I kind of admire the fact that he knew who he was to a certain extent, um, but it, that kind of goes hand in hand with one of the worst things about him was his lack of ability to see past himself. Um, so I suppose if you're spending a lot of time thinking about yourself, you probably know yourself quite well. Um, how would you like it to end? I would like to think that those two kids get back together, that they figure out their their stuff and that um, Toby can be a better man and Rachel can be a better woman and that together they can be a better, better partners to each other. Um, or not, I don't know. <laughs> um, I feel like this book really showcases how childhood trauma can influence relationships throughout your life, 100%. And I think that that's a huge thing as well, that un untreated trauma um, never goes away and that it just manifests itself in, in different ways and I think in some ways the longer it is before you really work on it and, and deal with it it can actually get worse and worse and it will come out in ways that you just never really expect um, that's why therapy is a very good thing I highly recommend it um, if I could buy the rights to a book could turn into a film series, would you do it? And I've tried to, I think Reese Witherspoon owns the rights to every single book in the world right now though. Um, but yes, I would love to. It's, um, so if you have any recommendations, send them my way. Um, did this book change something inside you emotionally? Um, I think it, what all good literature does, it really makes you think and consider. Um, and I definitely think I had to, I, I was 
very anti-Rachel in the beginning and I, I think I had some quite harsh opinions of her and, and I think that that's the thing that also this book asks us to examine is why do we you know why do we judge without really knowing the two sides to every story I think that's a huge thing you know and I think it's a thing of like we in the beginning it's sort of like oh Toby isn't he so great he's such a good dad he's looking after his kids and you're like but he's supposed to <laughs> he's you know, that's the basics of what he's supposed to do. And, 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 you know, his wife is actually mentally ill. I mean, he doesn't know this at the time, but it, it just appears to me that we sort of applaud the basics in um, one half of the sex and expect so much more from the other always. I don't know. Maybe that's a bit mean. Um, yes. Hannah's birth that's well I think that that's you know I, I personally know someone who had to or who had a similar kind of circumstance and I think that you know I, I know many women who have had awful traumatic experiences at birth and it happens so much more frequently than I think any of us would like to think and yet it's sort of expected as part of childbirth you know and I think I think right now of all those poor women who are about to go and have babies one of my best friends is a nurse in New York in the maternity ward and you think about all the women who are going through childbirth right now and they're not allowed to even have any other partners with them that's it's crazy it's crazy crazy um okay a few more questions and then I'm gonna have to call it a night um and also I want to ask uh, about next month's book. I've got a couple of suggestions and maybe we can read all of them, but there's one of them I really want everyone to read. I just don't know if it is um, translated into other languages. And I was trying to find out online, but I can't see. Um, Let me see. Did I like Toby or Rachel? Well, I had empathy for both of them, I think, towards the end. I think I could understand both points of view, but that's the problem is that they weren't listening to each other's. So, um, do, 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 uh, huh. Let me see. What do I think of Toby's journey in the book? Well, I think it was interesting, right? I think um, it was interesting to see how he was juggling his career in child care and, um, and not looking for emotional support. He was very happy just to have these anonymous um, sexual encounters and like flirtations and things and I think that that was really interesting because I I wonder if um, that says something about the kind of partner he was I don't know but um, but I do think it's interesting to see you know this idea of a man being left and being a single parent because it's not usually the narrative that we get told you know usually it's the poor little woman whose husband has walked out to buy a pack of cigarettes and then never comes home um so it was interesting to to uh to read it the other way around all right i'm trying to find more questions I've lived in NYC and I love the detail of the places I've been, but then kind of thought this is sort of elitist maybe when I realize not many people, others know. Um, well, I lived in New York for a long time and I did definitely did not live on the Upper West Side. Um, I was in my 20s and I definitely had more of Libby's 20s experience than, than that. But yeah, it's a very particular experience of New York that she's writing about. Um, yeah I mean I don't really relate to that New York but I think it's not really the I think it's the relationships that were sort of and and the sort of personal experiences that are more relatable rather than the things around it um where do I think Hannah will end up 
<laughs> I don't know, but I felt so bad about the, the whole um, summer camp thing. That's awful. Mm. And again, she gets sent home for sending a f to try to call me. <laughs> um, she gets sent home for sending a photo, but the boy doesn't get punished. What's that all about? What is it all about? Um, let's see. It's interesting that Libby never liked Rachel until she heard Rachel's story from her own perspective. Well, don't we all do that? I mean, don't we all tell our friends our side of things and, you know, usually, and I know I do this for my girlfriends, you, you sort of see things for them and you're their champion and you kind of defend them. Um, but there's always two sides to every story and that's the thing that we have to remember. You know, nothing is black and white. <laughs> Nobody is um, perfect or <laughs> not one person's always right and the other person always wrong. Uh, how do I choose my books? I don't know. I mean, I read a lot. I, I usually what I like to do is go to a bookstore and wander and you know some of the best bookstores will put up recommendations one of my favorite in la is um book soup or skylights in los Feliz, but i'm obviously not there um so now i'm either going on my own shelves um or i'm buying online but i'm i really don't like buying from amazon um but kind of have to at the moment um, somebody else who was 20 and saying she does not want, know want, she doesn't know she wants to get married after reading this it's really not that bad there's many great things that come with it um, worst book I've ever read and why um, I don't know usually if it's really terrible I put it down I don't bother finishing um Thoughts on the ending. I actually really liked it. It's a, it's a hopeful note. Um, I don't always need that in a book. Um, and I didn't expect it to be honest because I thought the rest of the book was quite, um, sort of like very real and harsh and sort of, you know, there was there was no looking at things through rose tinted glasses really so when um rachel goes back and stands in the doorway kind of sort of i needed it i needed it in in the way the world's going on right now i really did um there's lots of lovely comments about marriage here um what do I think about Toby seeing so much of himself and his son and Rachel and his daughter? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have kids, so I don't know if that's a common thing <laughs> or, um, uh, or if there's some kind of like, just because it's easier, because obviously his son is his son and, you know, he doesn't, he's it's much more recognizable than having to imagine what's going on in his daughter female's mind um could you choose a book that is in spanish also next time i'm trying i was okay so let's talk about next book because i am going to have to go in a couple of minutes i have two here um so one is heartbreakingly beautiful and i've i'm halfway through and it's just so gorgeous and so poetic and the language just mm, is incredible um but i don't know if it's translated and i've been trying to google all day to see if it's translated in uh other languages and i can't find out so can people let me know if on earth we were briefly gorgeous by ocean vuong is um in other languages and if so we'll pick it as the book um but one of my favorite writers ever 
And this is maybe too much for some people at the moment because it's quite uh, timely, even though it was written many, many years ago. Um, but I love Albert Camus, one of my favorite, favorite writers. And I was thinking that we could also read The Plague because I definitely know it is in many, many, many translations of different languages. Um, and it's also really timely. And I think for me, at least, I like to, uh, I like to go through experiences in books and it kind of makes me feel better rather than makes me feel worse. But um, let me know what you think. This one? This one? Both? Um, those are my choices. <laughs> how do I do an Insta poll? I mean, come on, people. I just learned how to do Insta Live. Uh, somebody will also have to teach me about that. Mm. Lots of people saying next book, next book. Um, <laughs> one of these two. All right. I am going to go. Thank you for all of your um, questions. And also, let's keep talking on the Instagram comments. It's really nice to hear what all of you think. And I'll start replying to some of them as well. Mwah. Thanks. Bye. There it goes. Yay. Sorry.